Victoria Toback for CBS Market Watch. We're here with Chuck D., leader and founder of Public Enemy and also the CEO of RapStation.com. Chuck, I wanted to start out by asking you, in this time of, of Napster and Nutella and Freenet and peer-to-peer technology, how is your company really differentiating itself in, in putting the power in the hands of content creators? Well, it's not much different. We, we have a situation, it's a service to uh, a genre that we call the seed genre. It's rap music and hip-hop. It's very focused. We have a micro-focused approach at it. We provide tools um, to participants, and we look at the public um, as being either participants or future partners and give them the option to consume and also to check out the information that we have on the genre. Our advantages are that traditional areas have not um, taken advantage on providing a service to the genre other than maybe a, a, a specialized 7 to 10 percent of the artistry that's out there and that only being domestic but we know that's a global economy, a, a global economy genre, and we know that um, um, that it crosses all barriers of background and ethicality, and that's why you know we consider Rap Station Pound for Pound the best. We call it the ESPN of rap music and hip hop because we feel that in content delivery, um, the key is micro focusing upon your subject and your topic and then being able to pretty much provide tools and say what you won't do to get you stretched over the drum and all over the place. No, being in that one spot that you're able to gather that that audience and that's where we're at. Okay, well you say that, that Rap Station is the, the ESPN and you also used to say that rap music was the, the, the CNN of, of the hip-hop culture and, and people. Ago. That was a long time ago, but I remember. What does that say about the, the shift in power among record labels, consumers, and artists? Well, n- the shift in power comes because of the, the access to technology. But I don't think the major labels, uh, I think they have the, an illusionary shift of power with their artists by giving them these label deals that won't work financially um, by giving them the illusion of control when they their contracts are still rigid and they really are really going to maybe if they happen to do a recording outside their label they're doing it with another major label not on their own um, it's usually kicked back into their master situations um, with the label that they're signed to so there's an illusion of power with the major labels. I think the transfer of power happens to come with the trick with the technology that startup entrepreneurs and recording artists that want to be able to be more than artists, and um, you know, and people that want to involve themselves with this parallel industry. I think that's what the shift of power, and it's a reluctant shift of power. I think the the major record companies are really trying to not have parity in the market. They won't it won't be a situation where they'll be, you know, tossed out of business. It'll be a, a situation where they'll be forced to share with hundreds of thousands of people that are gonna do the same thing that they've always said that they specialize in. So what do all businessmen, yourself on up to, you know, the CEOs of, of the major labels, what do they need to understand about consumers and what consumers are demanding when it comes to the internet and music and movies and, and books? Number one, I think they better understand that the consumers out there, the public, wants to be viewed upon more than just a, from a consumption basis. Their job is to get entertainment, and traditional models always said that they should be open to buy entertainment only. Um, I think consumers, you know, like I said, we at Rap Station, we like to say, number one, we look at the public as being participants in what we provide, information and, you know, things that we have that provide tools. Number two, we look at the public as being potential um, partners. If they have a label, if they have artistry, they can expose it on our area with no cost involved. Number three, we look at them, 
the public as saying, hey, we have a situation of e-commerce where we're going to, you know, you have the option to consume if you choose to. And I think that's a whole new way, I think, that um, in technology that um, um, new business models and content delivery better look at. I have a label, SlamGems.com, which will be launching in November. I pulled it out of Sony three years ago, and I know that the Internet allows it to um, come up with a whole plan that works upon its system. For example, um, we can be global overnight. We can cut songs one night and be out the next. Of course, we have to be realistic in our approach. Songs might go for 25 cents. EMI thinks that they could get downloaded albums for $17. I think that's short-sighted and not knowing how the system works. And um, uh, we have a system where we don't sign the artist, we sign the recorded master. So when people are making these, you know, recorded masters in their homegrown studios, um, there's no such thing as a demo. These songs are ready to go. And so, you know, we'll, we'll invest in 50% of the recorded master, own it for two years exclusively with us, and then you know license it for three years after on our on our option, which the, you know goes back to being owned by that company. So we encourage um, creators to own their their material. Okay, and finally, as business models evolve and as power structures change, where do you see online content in a five years? I, I can't go five years because two years is five years. <laughs> two years. Uh, by 2002, I foresee a million artists and a million labels all um, doing business and interacting on the Internet. And um, it will be a parallel business to the industry that we know of now. And um, although the business is being called parasitic, well, every growing business that takes advantage of an existing business can be called parasitic, so we'll, we'll live with that because it provides parity and it provides um, the openness of involvement with startup entrepreneurs. Okay, well, I'll be watching and waiting. Chuck D., thank you for your time. This is Victoria Tobek for CBS Market Watch.